everybody, it's Tyler here at Space City, checking in with 1698V Power Beans. Last year, world finalist in middle school, congratulations on that, and we're excited to talk more about their robot here. On a great run so far with event wins, currently uh, uh, fourth in true skill right now, really high up in skills ranking as well too, and it's all because of this incredible robot they have built here so far. A lot of great stuff going on that we'll be talking about with their Lady Brown and Backpack. We talk about how, of course, different aspects of this robot works, all the way through from their intake and how they're utilizing it out of the field. So let's learn more about them coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Alex, let's talk about this Lady Brown mech you're utilizing on your robot. Obviously, it's been a popular choice amongst many teams out there. How is this working out for Power Beans? Yeah, so this has been working out really well for us. Uh, we've done a lot of wall sticks in the matches, and one reason behind that is because we designed our Lady Brown to be as versatile as possible. So this is kind of short compared to a lot of other teams that you'll see, and that's because we need to be able to score on the alliance stake and also be able to tip Mogos and untip them. So to do this, we have again we have a short arm, right? Which means that we also need a really smooth entry for the rings to go into the polycarb. So our polycarb is very well designed. We've went through a lot of different uh, shapes for this polycarb, and ultimately we've ended up with this. So you can see that our top polycarb is six holes long and we have them connected over here and our bottom is only five holes long and this allows us for the ring to slide in really smoothly and you might see that we don't have mesh any mesh over here and that's because we use these omni rollers and rubber bands to squeeze the ring in so, so overall this, it's been gripping great for you and stuff so far yeah it's been working really well uh, as you can see that smooth entry right there uh, the rubber bands and the omni rollers work really well together to squeeze the ring and we also catted this before so we know exactly how high the polycarb needs to be raised up from each other so we have this one connected directly to our C channel and then this one with one inch spacers and we found that this is like the exactly perfect length what cat software are you using by the way uh, I'm a beginner this is my first year in VRC so I'm using on shape but I hope to move to fusion or inventor later on very cool. Hey, Richard, uh, speaking about on this uh, Lady Brown here, going into the backpack that you have, you're utilizing some different key positions uh, during the match as well, too. Talk to me more about that. Yeah, so we found that in order for this backpack to work efficiently, since it has such a small compartment and slot for the ring to fit into, we had to get to that angle perfectly every single time in order to work the most efficiently and intake it into the slot every single time. Now, at first, we tried just brute forcing it in by basically um, making the arm go up at like 12 volts, until, which is the max speed, until it reached a certain rotation used, detected by the motor encoder. But we found that this was really inconsistent sometimes, like when it, the motor was overheated or something, it would go to a different distance every time. So we tr first of all tried using a rotation sensor, which we attached this axle, which would detect how much the arm rotated and get the perfect angle for it to go in. But we found this was inconsistent as well as the issue was actually in the arm control itself. So what we did is we developed the arm PID, which would automatically get the arm to this angle, which is about 42 degrees every single time, which would, and then, but the problem was that with this was that sometimes we had a MOGA over here and we wanted to intake more rings. So we developed the arm PID to not only go to this angle and then wait for the ring to be intaked here, which is detected by the distance sensor over here. But then after it's detected to be in here, we would um, we would lift it up automatically so that, so that we can continue scoring with the mobile gold. So like, I'll show you a demonstration right now. So move the arm down and then, and then wait. Uh, move the arm down, all right. Now the arm is automatically gonna be lifted up by the driver using the PID and then, this is gonna go in and then it automatically lifts, lifts up. Now, the driver did that only pressing two buttons, which was the button that lifts the arm into this position and the button that intakes. The reason why we automatically lift it up after the intake, we have to outtake and lift it up, is because now we wanna intake more rings and then we can do that freely while there's a ring here ready to score. 
That whole cycle process you have is just so smooth, by the way. Like, yeah, thank well you. done uh, for putting that all together. Thank you. Uh, Zishwan, uh, on here too, in order to you know reset things, I see you got that reset bumper uh, going on there. And then, uh, what is this little device here, and how's that functioning for you too? Uh, so that little device, uh, we call it the clip. So what it does is it keeps the ring from falling out from behind, because like when it's out, sometimes when we get hit, it's just gonna go like that, and that is not good. You want it to stay in, and it, it also helps us like. We don't have to put mesh here. We don't have to put mesh here, so then it's, uh, so then it's like more easily to go into the Lady Brown. Now, now like this reset, it makes so that uh, the reset makes it go to this position every single time. So like, let's say I close the code right now, and then when I enter back in, when I try it, it goes up. But then if I reset, then it goes back to that position. And you're the driver of this robot, right? Yes. So, I mean, there's a lot of complex things happening with this, but it just seems like overall, as a driver, like, I think your team has made it as easy as possible for you to make this stuff happen. But the skill that's still required to drive this, when I saw you on the field, it's just awesome, too. What is, like, for you, what has been your number one focus as a driver in getting ready for matches? Well, so, like, when we first have a robot, like, to, in order to drive a robot well, you can't have, like, many different things you have to press at once, or else your brain's going to, like, not be able to process it. So we try to make things simple, like we only intake with one button, and then we only like raise this with one button, and we only use a mogo with one button, and we also only drive with one stick because that's like easier to control for me. So we talked a lot, a lot of great different stuff systems this robot here, but Alex talked to me more, or Alexander talked to me more about the uh, intake uh, that you're running through and uh, how it all came together. First off, notice these little wheels under the intake. So what these do is that when the arm. Notice that arm gets here. We're going to wall stakes. We have the we have the ring here, and um, what will happen is that the entire center of gravity of the robot will basically be shifting forward. And what that happens is that it pretty, it might tip basically, and that's what these wheels are for. And notice how they're kind of bent. And the reason for that is basically when if they're too close to the ground, they'll really drag on the ground, and then we cause a lot of fr friction. And this is also why they're small arm wheels in the first place because when they're on the ground, we don't want them to like cause a ton of friction. And the problem is that it actually collides the intake because uh, our intake, like kind of arms in here, basically it will go when it went down, it will basically go on top of these wheels, and that caused a whole no end of problems. So um, we have this basically in we basically cut in rag tube and just looped it around. And what this did was that it held the intake over the wheels and just enough so that it wouldn't touch while also being able to uh, in the intake wheels relatively easily. Rings. I didn't know if uh, Canton Omni wheels would be on my bucket list of robots this year, but that's pretty cool the way you uh, implemented that uh, on there to make sure that you're not tipping that sort of Have you actually had a situation where your robot has tipped and that has saved you yet? Um, basically, we had an old design with this kind of, this same kind of um, arm, and um, we kind of, just, basically, we moved our wheels around, and the center of gravity was basically just too forward. It hasn't actually had happened yet. We gotcha. just it's because you got a great driver, right? Yeah, also because we didn't want to risk actual tip. For sure. Hey, Lexi, uh, on the back of your robot here, I noticed uh, you do have that polycarb that's used for centering on this mobile uh, gold mech on here. So just talk to me about some of the implementation for that. Uh, so we have this polycarb. It's so that the mobile goal can more smoothly enter like into the mechanism. So like as you can see here, you can I, I can kind of shift this. It makes sure so that like for example, like if I couldn't move this, then the mobile code could just go like this. I mean, um, this can move, but like it's not gonna happen. Like it doesn't go like this, and then it can get stuck on the side, which can really waste our time during a match. So because this can move, um, our mobile goal, if it goes in here, then it can just like slide in here, and in so that like we can clamp onto the mobile goal, and uh, it allows us to score more easily. Well, overall, this is a phenomenal robot, by the way, Power Bean. So thank you so much for taking time to tell us more about it. Uh, I think there's so much that our teams can be inspired from and learn from what this is as well, too. So, of course, good luck here at Space City. You're having a great run so far. We can't wait to see how you do. And throughout the rest of the competition season, thanks a lot. Okay, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected.